hi guys thank you so much for clicking this video this is battle with Ola. my name is mujola lua and uh, today we want to talk about incitement remember that when i made the video on inquiry offenses i mentioned that uh, uh we'll still talk about some other inquiry offenses and then when i made the video on the seven deadly sins i said we we're going to talk about incitement as one of the deadly sins the manifestations of the deadly sins you know so incitement it is today I want to thank everyone who has subscribed to the channel so far. If, you if you're watching and you have not subscribed, please click the subscribe button. Stop waiting, stop waiting, stop dilly darling. Also, please like the videos as soon as you've watched them and leave me comments in the comment section. Don't forget that if you need paid consultation, if you need to speak with me directly as your lawyer now, you know, you can always book a paid session using the link in the description box and we'll talk you know lawyer to client but if you have a general question that other people which answer other people can benefit from just leave it in the comment section or mail me at house of livingstones at gmail.com also my book is finally here i'm so happy so i've been writing this book for uh, about nine months or eight months now so uh it's uh, a documentation of my mediation experience if you're familiar with my journey on this channel you will know that uh I became a full-time mediator about three years ago, almost three years ago now. So the book is finally ready. Uh, it's uh, on seller as usual. So I'll leave the link in the description box and you can see it on the screen. Please buy the book and read it. It's uh, a lot of uh, resources and energy and time, you know, and my art has gone into the writing of that book. I kept on writing. I had to stop myself because if I don't stop and publish, I would just keep writing and perpetuate it so much. It's a lot that I wanted to communicate and to document. So if you are an intending mediator or if you are considering mediation, you know, as a dispute resolution technique, or if you're just generally interested in mediation, or if you just want to, you know, look through my own journey as a mediator so far, the book is for you. Please buy it on sale. It's an ebook for now. It's an ebook. Uh, so please buy and read it and leave me uh, comments as well. I leave reviews on seller and uh, there's a link in the book for you to tell me what uh, you feel about the book. So just click that link when you're done and let me know. It's uh, on seller. It's called On Your Marks, Get Set, Mediates. So uh, let's get into incitement. Incitement is one of the inquiry offenses. We've talked about inquiry offenses as offenses that are incomplete you know incomplete that is they are not completely carried out so we cannot liken them to complete offenses like murder and robbery and the like so um incorrect offenses one of them is incitement and incitement from the word just means uh provoking encouraging you know instigating another person or other people to commit a crime so it generally means uh instigating or provoking another person or other people so you can address it to one person or to several persons you know to commit a crime especially in this age of social media incitement is easier because you could literally just post or tweet something and you have you know started a fire you know that you cannot even pull out so when you instigate other people when you provoke them to commit a crime you're inciting them and so that's incitement if we look at the Nigerian Criminal Code, you will not find a definition for incitement, but there's a definition of common law which I've just explained, and there are decided cases which explain what incitement is. Now, uh, incitement is a peculiar uh, offense because you do not necessarily need uh, um, the result of your incitement before you can be guilty of incitement so what is needed is the actus reus that is the communication that you make to another person or other people so once that is established that's incitement you have uh, made other people or led them so it could be by threats you could be threatening them or you could be persuading them for instance uh more recently there has been an incitement uh there was an incitement against uh Igbo people of nigeria you know uh, someone in the UK kept on tweeting and kept on, you know, posting things about uh, what we can call Igbophobia, so to speak. You know, even the UK government had to come out and denounce, you know, that uh, those communications or that communication and, uh, you know, the person was uh, handled appropriately. So incitement is very, very important and it's gaining ground in the social media age. As a matter of fact, you might not know that you're inciting people. So it's very important for you to weigh 
your communication and what you're saying and how it might be received by people. So that's what incitement is. I want to look at uh, a few decided cases. I'm going to be reading what the court has said about incitement. In Nigeria, uh, in the Nigerian law so far, especially the criminal code now, you notice that uh, we only have three, uh, a few types of incitement that you can find in sections 44 to 46. And it's uh, generally targeted at the army, you know, at the army and the police. So, uh, but incitement is much more than that now. Once we look at that, uh, those provisions of law, and we are able to understand the intent of those provisions, we will see how it applies to other aspects of our life. So I'm going to read those provisions to you as well now. I'm reading section 44 of the Criminal Code now. Any person who advisedly attempts to effect any of the following purposes, that is to say to seduce any person serving in any of the armed forces of Nigeria or any member of the police force from his duty and allegiance, to incite any such persons to commit an act of mutiny or any traitorous or mutinous act, or to incite so any such persons to make or endeavor to make a mutinous assembly is guilty of a felony and is liable to imprisonment for life. So when you incite unto mutiny, that is a felony and it attracts life imprisonment. Life imprisonment. So in chapter 45, it talks about incitement unto sedition. So you're inciting any member of the armed forces or the Nigerian police to sedition or any seditious act. You know, you'll be guilty of incitement. And 46 talks about incitement unto disobedience or desertion. So when you incite members of the armed forces or police force to uh, to desert or commit uh, any form of disobedience, you know, you know, disobedience as uh, in their line of duty, you're guilty of incitement. In uh, uh, let's look at what Usman Kaza and the state says about incitement. So if you go through that judgment, you will see some portions where it talks about incitement. And I just wanted to bring it out. In uh, that case, the court put incitement side by side with abetment. So uh, it almost equates incitement to abetment. Abetment as in aiding and abetting. So you know when you're aiding and abetting someone to commit a crime, you're encouraging them, you know, and facilitating the commitment of the crime. So let's look at what the court said in Kaza and the state. The court here was trying to define the offense of abetment. So it says, I go to the offense of abetment. Abetment is an act of encouraging, inciting, or aiding another. And then in the next paragraph, it tries to uh, uh, explain uh, all those uh, words that have been used to encourage, inciting, or aiding. So he says that uh, for the accused person to be convicted of abetment under Section 85 of the Penal Code, the prosecution must prove the following ingredients. One, that there was an encouragement, incitement, setting on instigation, promotion, or procurement of the offense, and some other things. Now, it says that incitement also has the element of encouragement. By incitement, the person is provoked by a strong passion or feeling to commit an offense. So when you are provoking those strong passions and feelings in people, that's incitement. You know, you could go on social media, for instance, or go to the newspaper and make an advertisement, advertisement that says, bring down the judiciary, bring down the judiciary. And then you're saying things to people or you have uh, made a caption or, or written uh, content that shows that you want people to take laws into their hands and go after members of the judiciary because of a perceived wrong, maybe to start kidnapping them, beating them, forcing them out of their houses or out of their offices, you know, making it impossible for them to do their duty and even killing them. So that's incitement. So you must be careful how you communicate these days. There are so many things that you could say that could be borderline incitement and that could be uh, effectively interpreted as incitement. So it's very important to be careful in our speech. Of course, you can uh, incite, so to speak, people to do the right things, you know, but uh, when you incite people, for instance, to a mutinous assembly, maybe you say everyone who is in support of bringing down the judiciary, let's meet at uh, under the Obali Day Bridge tomorrow by uh, 8 a.m. prompt, wear black dresses, this and that, come with a machete or something of the sort. That's incitement. Yes, if, if you had said, okay, let's uh, make a peaceful walk or let's have a peaceful protest, you know, uh, against the tyranny or the injustices, you know, perceived injustices in the judiciary. That's different. You know that when people come, you just walk, you take placards and maybe you grant press uh, uh, interviews and say what's on your mind. But when you say, let's come, come with machetes, come with this and that, you know, let's bring down the judiciary. We're taking laws into our hands. We're taking over and all of that, you know. 
that's incitement and that's uh, criminal in nature, even though it's an inchoate offense. Uh, once it can be established that you communicated this to people and that uh, even in the case in, uh, in Aaron Kelmsford, it was uh, held that even in the absence of if the communication fails, incitement will still lie. So it's important. So the court just needs to look at what's the intention. What was your intention in making this communication? And did you actually make it to people? And is this communication capable, you know, of, of, of stirring up anger, passion in people to do what you're asking them to do or to do or to commit, you know, a criminal act? So if those things are established, we have incitement on our hands and it's one of the seven deadly sins. Like we said in that video, I'll leave the link to it in the description box. Please watch it. So that is incitement. It is a crime in Nigeria. And even though you would not find it codified in a straightforward manner as you would find murder or uh, manslaughter or, or unlawful killing now in the criminal code, for instance, it is a crime. So it's like a preliminary offense. So it could be that uh, when uh, a person is charged for incitement, if there's a following act, they will be charged alongside that as well. So as we have seen, incitement is a crime in Nigeria, even though uh, it's not codified in, in a straightforward manner as, uh, say, kidnapping or murder or manslaughter, it is a crime. And since the court has put it side by side with abetment, it could even be, uh, a person could be charged for abetment, you know, instead of incitement, and uh, or they could be charged, you know, with incitement, where it falls under the categories we've read in uh, section, 40, in sections 44 to 46 of the criminal code so let's be very careful with our communication these days whether online or offline you know to individuals or to uh, a collection of people or the general public so that's so all that's I, all i want to talk about in this video i will see you in my very next video don't forget to subscribe don't forget to buy my books on your max get set mediates to